What's good everyone? In today's video, I'm bringing you something I've never done before. I'm going to explain the five biggest mistakes I see Apex players make. Now, quick credential check for any of the new viewers. I've been playing Apex since Season 2. I have well over 4,000 hours in this game. And I've also been coaching on Fiverr with over 100 lessons done. and They've all got 5-star reviews. Now, obviously, I make a ton of videos on Apex. And so when I say these mistakes are the most common, you're just going to have to trust me. If you're new here, my channel centers around helping you guys improve at Apex, and without anything further, let's hop right into these five biggest mistakes that I see. The first mistake is going to be inventory management. First, let me say I'm surprised at how many people struggle with this, but I like to think about loot in terms of what do I need versus what am I looking for. That way, every single time I'm in a game, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I don't have to stop, pause, and try to grab this or that. I'm on a mission to get what I need if I come across it. And this is all within reason, because I know some of y'all can be greedy with what you want versus what you need. Inventory management comes down to simple math. Let's cover shields and health heals. In Apex, you're going to get your shield cracked many more times than you're going to get hit to one shot. So for this reason, you want to carry a 2 to 1 ratio of shields to health meds. Carrying large amounts of meds is something I see all the time, and you don't want to be doing that. I know it can be quick to hop in a death box and just grab a ton of syringes, but you really don't need more than four. And as far as med kits, you don't need more than two. So an ideal loto is two med kits, four syringes. For shields, it really depends on what you can find and how big your backpack is. But ideally, I would have two to six shield batteries and four to 12 shield cells. Batteries are gonna be the most luxurious healing items, so the more you can find, the better. Now moving on to ammo stacks. Think about how you can hold 60 ammo per backpack slot of heavy, light, and energy ammo. So if you have 90 ammo for an R301 and your bag is full, grab whatever light ammo you can see. That way you top off that backpack slot. See, if the backpack slot is being used, you may as well max it out. And this goes for heals as well. Utilize all the space you have available. If you have 10 shield cells, it makes sense to hold 12 because they stack in groups of four. If you're carrying a shotgun, you only need one stack of ammo, truly. If you're using two stacks of shotgun ammo, only do that if you really need to and you have a purple or gold bag where you have the luxury of having more space. Now, when I coach players, I often see them go about looting and they're just grabbing this or that. Now, stop doing that. Focus on what guns you have and grab the appropriate attachments or ammo for those weapons. Now, if you have a gun and you're looking to swap guns, only do that for a certain amount of time. Give yourself a minute or two. If you don't find that weapon, commit on using whatever gun you have. You don't want your backpack taken up with unnecessary attachments that don't apply to the weapons you have. You can utilize those backpack slots for things like grenades or heals or whatever, but not stuff you're not actually using. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do me one favor and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It only takes a second of your time and helps push the video out to more viewers, and I would truly appreciate you doing so. The second biggest mistake is going to be stop spending so much time looting. And I know what it's like. As a newer player, you want to try to find everything you could possibly need, and the reality is, you just don't need to. The more you can get familiar with fighting with the necessities, the better off of a player you will become. If you spend 10 minutes looting every game and then die to the first team you run into, well, one, that feels terrible, and two, you're not really getting better. You're just looting. So land hot, play smart, and get into as many fights as you can, within reason. But especially do this in public matches. Now a lot of this comes down to time. How much time are you even available to play Apex a day or a week? If it's only a few hours, you don't want a third of your playtime to be consumed with looting the edge of the map. You want to be getting into engagements and learning to improve. Now I often coach a lot of players who solo queue, and they feel tied to what their teammates are going to do. And this is only true to an extent, but don't let them dictate everything you're going to do. For example, if you solo queue trios and your two teammates are just interested in looting, maybe try solo queuing duos where if you aren't with your teammate, taking on a 1v2 is much more manageable than taking on a 1v3 in trios. There are no shortcuts in getting better at Apex. So practicing a lot of the situations you're going to find yourself in time and time again are some of the major keys to success. The third biggest mistake I see is people don't know how to gather information. Now this is going to be the most important thing to improve on. But with Apex having so many variables in any given fight, it is the hardest thing for me to articulate to you. The only real way that I could possibly articulate this to you is doing a VOD review. That's basically where someone records their gameplay, we sit down, we watch it together, where we can pause each moment and analyze things. But ultimately, what I mean by gathering info is you need to be looking at teams, seeing what they're doing, what angles are they developing, how many are there, are they pushing? All of this stuff is vital to know how soon the fight is going to come to a head. Let's say you're in a building and you get low. So you go inside, you start popping a shield battery, but you have no idea what that team is doing. Are they pushing? 
Are they staying put? Did they use an ability to close the gap? Gathering info here is critical, and it can be done through communication. Maybe a teammate knows something you don't, and they relay that to you, and you can adjust accordingly. Or maybe they don't say anything, and you're stuck trying to figure it out yourself. Well, one of the only ways you're going to be able to do that is by looking, using your eyes, and getting line of sight. One of the main reasons why Bloodhound and Seer are disliked is because their abilities often give out free information, information that you would otherwise never know. And good players pride themselves on game sense. So when there is a legend that gives that info with the click of a button, players feel like they're just simply outplayed by it with no counter. So think about the information that you would gather with a Bloodhound, Seer, or even a Crypto, and then pretend to get that information without those legends. Those sort of things are vital to Apex and improving your game sense. Anticipating enemies' movement or plays are going to be crucial to learning to outplay them. If you guys are interested in doing a VOD review with me, I can't recommend it enough. It's basically what professional athletes do. I mean, look at an NFL team. After the game on Sunday, they're sitting down Monday and reviewing the footage. There's a link in the description to my Fiverr profile and you can schedule a coaching session with me. The fourth mistake is rotations. Lots of players don't really understand when and where to rotate. And I've seen this for pubs and ranked. Now, rotations overall are all gonna be very unique. So I can't give you a blanket statement for every single rotation that you're gonna make, but I do have some guidelines. The first rule is never rotate late past round two storm. See, round one and two storm are annoying, but you can still out heal them if you have the meds and even a heat shield. But anything past round two, forget about it. Sure, there are the heat shields like I said, but if the rotation is far, there's no way you're making it in round three or four. Now in general, rotating late sets bad habits in my opinion. It relies way more on luck than skill. You have to get lucky to not only get out of the storm, but also be lucky that no other team is sitting on the edge of circle. Because maybe they rotated late, but were 15 seconds earlier than you, and then boom, you're getting held out by them now. So you never really know what's on the other side of the storm. Because hey, like I said about gathering info, if you can't see it, you don't really know. So it's better not to chance it and rotate late. The meta of rotating late has become more and more a thing these days. And I swear, it never used to be like that. And obviously if you have mobility legends, you can use their abilities to help with these rotations. But just be conscious of how much time is left before the zone is closing, how far do you need to rotate to, and try to get an idea of the path you want to take and then go for it. You may have to adjust that plan accordingly due to seeing teams in front of you or trying to hold you out in certain areas. But more times than not, I can tell you, rotating early is always going to be the safer bet. The fifth mistake I see is you need to start understanding your role as whatever legend you're playing as. I see often players not knowing either how or when to use their abilities or they don't seem to care about what their legend's role actually is. And once again, this is a broad topic with a lot of specifics, but I'll try my best to simplify it for you. If you're a mobility legend, for example, and your ability isn't on cooldown, then you can use that movement to stay alive in a lot of scenarios, or at least try to. If I'm Wraith and I'm pulling up to a 3v3 and I'm the first one on my team to engage, I want to try to be the last one to die, because I have a way out if I take too much damage. I have my phase. So timing this and understanding that I'm allowed to get into the fight, deal damage, and then back up to heal is a solid move. But if I'm Bloodhound, I don't want to be doing the same thing because I want to understand that being the first one to engage as a Bloodhound, I could find myself caught out or overexposed and then I don't have an ability to get out of that in most scenarios. Or if I'm Lifeline, I absolutely want to be the last one alive on my team because my abilities center around being the medic and having teammates be able to get quickly revived. See, each legend class has a role on the team and then each legend in that class can be more niche in that role. And it's super important to understand what legend you are and how you should play in that fight. Now I have legend guides on basically every legend out there. So if you're looking to master a certain one, click on my channel page to see what more you can learn about them. If you guys found this video helpful, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on my next upload. That's going to be it for me. I'll catch you on my next one. Peace.